there are many, many shares issued by many different companies in the market. Now, if you want to invest, but you have limited fund, which means that you cannot buy shares in too many companies, or maybe you don't even know which companies to buy, then you have the choice of buying units from unit trust. This is how unit trust operate. A group of professionals in a fund management company will do the analysis and select the shares of companies to buy from the market. The investors from the public are invited to invest in the fund management company. And the fund management company use the money to buy and manage those shares that they have selected. The investor do not get the shares of the different companies, but get units from the fund management company. And they are called unit holders. So when the prices of shares of those companies selected by fund management companies increase, the price of the units will also increase. When the companies distribute dividends, the fund management companies may distribute the dividends to the unit holders. The fund management companies may also declare bonus issue, just like ordinary companies. Of course, the fund management companies will charge fees for their services. That's how they make profits for themselves. There are many unit trusts on the market. For example, Amana Saham National, Amana Saham Malaysia, Amana Saham Bumiputra are unit trusts managed by government agencies. There are also many which are managed by private companies like CIMB Growth Fund, Public Mutual Fund, Penanga Growth Fund, and many more. Now let's look at the return on investment in the case of investing in unit trust. Owen buy 3,000 units from ABC Income Fund at a price of 3 ringgit 45 cent. The unit trust fund distribute dividends two times before Owen sells the unit at 3 ringgit 60 cent, three years later. The first dividend distribution is 8 cent per unit. The second distribution is 7 cent per unit. What is the ROI of his investment? Returns on investment is net gains over cost of investment times 100%. The returns are dividends issues of 8 cent per unit times 3,000 units and 7 cent per unit times 3,000 units. The capital gains is 3 ringgit 60 cents minus 3 ringgit 45 cent times 3,000 units. Cost of investment is 3 ringgit 45 cents times 3,000 units. And we have 240 plus 210 plus 450 divided by 10,350 ringgit. And that gives us 8.7%. Here, note that the returns on investment we do not take time frame into consideration. If the return is 8.7% per year, this investment is okay. But over three years, this is not good. So when we calculate the ROI, we need to be aware of the time frame issue. 